Oh. How long was I out? It was one hell of a party. I had the worst dream that GPU prices rose due to cryptocurrency miners and that all you could find in stores was utter shit. Thank God that was just a dream. To my dismay, when I went to my local computer store to find the next victim to review, my nightmare became a very real reality and everything was sold out. There are scenes like this across the international market as well. All that was left for me and others to buy was this little guy. It's cheap and may tempt some as it's often one of the only affordable options at computer retailers now. So is it good at gaming? Is it even worth considering? Well, the uh, short answer is no. In addition to being a terrible card at gaming, this has the distinction of having lies printed on the box. This seems to be a common theme with low-end AMD cards. Hmm. However, to MSI's credit, this card isn't marketed towards gaming. At all. In fact, there's nothing on the box that even remotely mentions gaming. If purchased new at your local hardware shop, you may end up paying in upwards of $60 for this card. For that price, it's inexcusably bad. But for, say, $3, it's actually quite a good deal. Again, like I've stated in my other videos, it all depends at what price you find the card at. With that said, if you find yourself with one, what kind of performance can you expect? At the beating heart of the R5 230, you'll find a Koikos Pro GPU with 160 archaic Terascale 2 stream processors, the core chooches along at 650 MHz with 2 GB of GDDR3 video buffer to keep the core chooching. With a small 64-bit memory bus and a memory bandwidth of a meager 8.5 GB per second, don't expect to have giant textures render quickly with this card. So that's a brief overview of the stats of this card, and they aren't the most impressive, even for a low-end card. As a result, we are tempering our expectations and won't expect miracles in terms of gaming with this card. 1080p is basically out of the question, except for the most low-end of games. But what kind of performance can we expect from it? What can it play, and at what settings? The test rig for this benchmarking session is our standard Xeon X3460 4-core 8-threaded CPU overclocked to 4GHz with 8GB of DDR3. The games that we tested with the R5 230 were Doom, Fear, Amnesia The Dark Descent, Grand Theft Auto V, Killing Floor 2, Skyrim Special Edition, Star Wars Battlefront 1, Overwatch, and Players Unknown Battleground. We included some older titles because, although newer games are always interesting to test, the cold hard truth is that some people, like myself, still find playing older games fun and sometimes find them more engaging than newer microtransaction loot box filled games. The first game that we tested was Amnesia The Dark Descent. Despite this game's age, we did have to drop the settings too low at 720p. At these settings we did get a decent enough frame rate of 51, perfectly playable for this older title. If it's all you got, you can certainly enjoy the exploration and mysteries filling the caverns of Brennenburg Castle with this particular card. The next old game that we tested was Fear. This was personally one of my favorite games to come out of 2005 along with... Civilization 4, Age of Empires 3, Silent Hunter 3, Doom 3, X3 Reunion, Serious Sam 2, Battlefield, Battlefield 2, 2, Stronghold, Special Forces, Earth, Star Wars 2, Battlefront 2, Call of Duty 2, good one, Grand Theft Auto, Day San Defeat, Andreas, Source, Total War, The Movie, Wars, Invasion. and Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. We managed to get Fear running at 1400 by 1050 Not quite an ideal resolution for a 16x9 monitor, but it looked great at those settings. Most of the time, this card handled it like a champ with another average of 51. Occasionally, when our brains were melting from particle effects, it dipped down to 19, but overall it was a great experience on this card. I have to admit, even though this game isn't the scariest, its superb gunplay and careful use of game mechanics still makes it one of my all-time favorite shooters. And speaking of favorite shooters, Doom! No, don't adjust your monitor, and no, YouTube didn't drop your resolution to 144p. The game actually looks this bad. At 640x480, on the lowest settings, the card struggles to get 21 FPS. Although the 1% minimums only drop to 9, the game often slows down with multiple enemies on screen. Uh, maybe we should just lower our expectations a bit. 
If Doom is too much, maybe it'll be able to handle Overwatch. Nope. The card really can't handle it. Not really. At 720p minimum settings, it got a poor 15 FPS average, with it occasionally dipping as low as 11. Maybe at 1024 by 768 the results would have been a bit better. I really felt bad for my team here. Sorry guys, even with more frames I'm not going to be much of a help. Well, maybe overclocking it will though. It certainly helped the HD 6450 which managed to run this game when we tested it. And with the R5 230 being essentially the same card, but clocked slower, it should perform as well. We'll find out in a short minute, but first, here's a bunch more game benchmarks for you guys to savor. The only game here that we tested that's kind of acceptable is Grand Theft Auto V at the lowest settings and resolution. Even so, it did dip down to 15 FPS at times. All told, it's like running GTA V on an Xbox 360. Not great, but passable. Maybe we should give this card a bit more spunk. I overclocked the core from 650MHz to 850 and overclocked the RAM by 150MHz as well. Anything more and this card got a little bit unstable and started to artifact. We reran two of our benchmarks, Players Unknown and Overwatch. With the overclock we actually did manage to increase our frame rates, but it didn't push the games into the playable realm. But the frame rate is a little bit better. Back to the question we posed at the beginning of our video. Is this card good at gaming? Well, it's probably best to avoid newer AAA titles with this card. The best use of the R5 230 is as a display adapter for a PC that doesn't have integrated graphics, or as a GPU for playing older titles of yesteryear. Would I recommend buying one? Not unless it's damn near free. But if you have one, you can certainly play old but gold titles. But for the price I paid for this card, it displeases me greatly, so off to the mines with you!